book is called The Amazing Herschel Gordon Lewis and His World of Exploitation Films. I guess I am the amazing Herschel Gordon Lewis. You may wonder who I am and why there's a book about me. Well, the answer is primarily pictures like this, Blood Feast. This says the genesis of gore. Gore in motion pictures was something that didn't exist before I came along. We began to make pictures which now appear in anthologies, and many of them are released on videotape. You'll see a few of them on cable, and they still play in theaters after an awful lot of years. Why? I think it's because these were films that no one else had made. And with a very small handful of exceptions, no one has made films like them since. Because when we made films, one thing the audience knew, blood was going to flow. There were only a couple of us making films like that. I was one. My friend Pat Patterson was another. I want to talk to you about my friend Pat Patterson. I first met Pat Patterson when I was looking for three people to work with me on a motion picture. I needed someone who could direct some scenes. I needed an actor who could really project. Most of all, I needed someone to handle some gore effects. Effects that would knock the audiences right off their seats. And you know what? I found all three people. And their name were Pat Patterson, J.G. Patterson. Pat was a consummate actor. He was very good on screen. He had implicit stage presence. He was a good director. He knew how to handle people, even big crowd scenes. And when it comes to gore, well, you'll see what Pat knew about gore. We used to measure our films by the amount of stage blood we used. Blood Feast was a three-gallon picture. 2,000 Maniacs was a five-gallon picture. Once we started working with Pat Patterson, we forgot those numbers. We were up to 15, 20 gallons because he knew how to use that stage blood. Well, time went by and Pat went off and made his own picture. And the picture was lost, was never shown. Pat died in 1974. Many people thought that the film was lost forever. But no, it was rediscovered, and you're about to see it. And I think you'll find when you look at this picture, you're going back to a time before all the artificial and mechanical contrivances that we see today in films of this type. Pat didn't have what we call prosthetic devices. He didn't have some of the strange effects that we have seen in high-budget films in which we admire the effects, but we know as we see them that they're phony. So don't look for highly sophisticated filmmaking here. If ever a film were made by one person and is a reflection of one person, it's this film, the lost film of Pat Patterson, which you're about to see. I think you'll agree. You may not like the acting. You may not like the storyline. For all I know, you may not like the gore. But I think you'll agree. After you've seen this picture, you're not about to forget it very soon. So why don't we all sit back and enjoy the lost film of the master of gore, Pat Patterson. 